Cosby Show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And now, Harold Perry as Honest Harold, the homemaker. Well, it's the end of another day in Melrose Springs, and its good citizens are wending their way homeward from work. And chugging home in his 36 Essex is the town's most popular radio entertainer, Honest Harold. Uh, well, it'll be kind of nice to get home. Think I'll just stay in with Mother tonight. Maybe I can finish that new book I've been reading, The Egg and I. <laughs> See, that reminds me. I'm supposed to stop at the market and get a dozen eggs. I can just find a place to park. Oh, there's a place right up there. I'll hurry up and pull in before somebody else... Oop! There's another car trying to beat me to it. Just a moment there. I saw this place first. <laughs> Still backing up. Oh, I'll show him. I'll get in there before he does. Hey, look out! Oh, <laughs> right into me. What's the matter with you up there? Where's that, Sonny? Oh. <laughs> Old man Walker in his 33 Rio. He's the most irritating... What's the trouble? Would you mind moving ahead, Mr. Walker? I saw this parking place first. What'd you say? <laughs> I guess I'll have to go up there and talk to him. Lucky my headlight didn't fall off like it usually does. <laughs> Mr. Walker? Oh, howdy, Sonny. What's going on back there? I thought I felt something. <laughs> Naturally, you felt something. You backed into me. I did? Yes. Oh, I thought it was funny when my chewing tobacco jumped right out of the glove compartment. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And look at my car back there. You put a dent in it. Let's see. I put a dent in that car? How can you tell? <laughs> hey! Now, just a minute, Walker. You better get that heap off the street, Sonny. Tonight's can night. <laughs> Um. <laughs> Look here, Walker, that car isn't so old It's a late 36 I say I said 36 If you get 36 bucks for that jalopy, you better take it Well, I'm in a hurry Are you going to let me in that parking space? Sure, I don't want the parking space What? I was just practicing backing up <laughs> Oop, you scared my headlight off I say nothing. Goodbye. Another piece of pie, Harold. No, thanks, Mother. That third piece kind of filled me up. Uh, oh, that was a wonderful dinner. Oh, thank you, son. Uh, Harold. Yes, Mother? There's, uh... There's something I ought to tell you. Oh, what's that? Well, oh, you'll think I'm silly. Mother? What is it? A gentleman is calling on me tonight. What? <laughs> well, Mother. <laughs> A gentleman caller. Well, I think that's wonderful. Where'd you meet him? Oh, I get around. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And who is this gay Lothario? Oh, he's my leading man. What? Yes, we're going to be in a play together. Our old folks group is giving it, you know, the sunny side of 70 Club. Oh, yeah. Well, that's kind of cute. What's the play called, Mother? Oh, uh, the name of it is um, Penelope from Pawtucket. Oop. <laughs> and I play Penelope. Uh. I'm in love with the captain of a whaling boat, Roby Dick. Roby Dick. Mm. Oh, Look out yonder, out the window. Hmm? Is that a ship out there? Looks like the can box to me. <laughs> Roby Dick, you've come back. You've come back. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> oh, brother. Um... <laughs> I was only acting, Harold. Yeah, I'm glad you told me, Mother. <laughs> And then uh, the captain and I have a very romantic scene. Uh, we hold hands and watch the sunset together. Uh, <sighs> uh, mother, you sound like you're taking that part kind of seriously. 
<laughs> well, uh, my leading man is rather charming. Oh, uh, who is he? Well, his name is... Mm -hmm. Oh, there he is. Oh. Will you let him in, Harold? What? I want to put on my butterfly brooch. Oh, yeah. I'll be right in. Yeah. Mother's pretty cute, all right, primping up like that. New friend must be quite a chic. Wonder who he is. Well, hello, Sonny. Zeef. <laughs> Mr. Walker, don't tell me you're mother's leading man. Sure am, Captain Roby Dick. Yeah. Haul out the fishing nets, men. I see a mackerel. That's you, Sonny. Yeah. <laughs> oh, brother. Well, nice place you got here. Glad you like it. Since your mother and I are in this play together, I guess you'll be seeing a lot of me. Uh, that's ducky. I say. Uh, I said I'm very lucky. <laughs> yeah, I guess you are. Good evening, Mr. Walker. Well, hello, Mrs. Hemp. <laughs> ah, you're looking lovely this evening. Oh, thank you. Oh, uh, Harold, uh, have you met Mr. Walker? Oh, yes, Mother. We bumped into each other downtown. <laughs> yes, yeah, very good. Yeah, thank you very much. Oh, Penelope. Yes, Captain Roby Dick. I brought you a little something. A <laughs> bag of peanut brittle. Oh, my, that was sweet of you. No, it wasn't much. <laughs> it certainly wasn't. <laughs> uh, sit down, Mr. Walker. Well, thank you, ma'am. Oop, taking my easy chair. It's a wonder he doesn't smoke my cigars, too. See, you got some cigars here. Mind if I smoke one? Oh, no. Go right ahead. Take two. They're oh. small. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, I'll take one for the road. I wish you'd take the road. <laughs> well, I have the script. Shall we start to rehearse, Mr. Walker? Okay, Penelope. Shall we do the romantic part first? <laughs> Sounds like Errol Flynn at 90. Sonny. <laughs> uh, eh? What? Isn't it getting past your bedtime? <laughs> no, no, I usually stay up till nine o'clock. Well, okay, stick around. You'll see some real acting, Chautauqua style. Yo. Yeah, oh. <laughs> <clears throat> There's a storm a brewing tonight, batting down the hatches, man. Think they'll hear me in the last row? I think they'll hear you in Charlieville. <laughs> oh, heavens to fish hooks. My sweet Penelope waits for me, and here I am, miles out to sea. This is terrible. This is where I leave the boat. <laughs> Roby Dick. All people mother had to be in a play with him. Be awful if she got to like that laughing hyena. Well, that's ridiculous, of course. As long as I'm on the loose tonight, though, might as well drop in in the dancing academy and see Theodora. <laughs> Hope my little dancing teacher is in. <laughs> Door chimes need tuning. <laughs> Who is it? Uh, it's Haroldy Waroldy. Oh, goody woody. Goody woody. <laughs> Gee, we play cute. <laughs> Harold. Hello, Theodora. I thought you were going to stay home and read a book tonight. Well. I know. You just couldn't stay away from your little Theo. Well, could be all. <laughs> <laughs> Besides, it was a little crowded in our parlor this evening. <laughs> Mother's rehearsing a play with old Mr. Walker. Oh, isn't that cute? Well, yes. <laughs> kind of a romantic play, so it made me think of you. Oh, what shall we do tonight, Teddy Bear? Teddy Bear. <laughs> I guess it's a little late to go bowling or yeah. go to the movies. Looks like we'll just have to stay here and sit on the sofa. Yeah, too bad. <laughs> well, shall we sit down? <laughs> All righty. Uh, uh, uh. Theodora? Hmm? Mind if I turn the lamp down a little? Turn the lamp down? Yeah. There. I'm the man who came to dimmer. <laughs> <laughs> Had that written on my cuff. <laughs> Sorry, the laundry didn't get it now. <laughs> ah, but this is nice, isn't it? Two of us sitting here on the sofa, looking into each other's eyes. 
Guess this is what people used to do before they had television sets. <laughs> <laughs> Shall I get a little music on the radio? Sure, what the heck. Yeah. Gee, that's pretty. I love Guy Lombardo. In dreams I kiss your hand, madame Your dainty fingertips And while in slumberland, madame I'm begging for your lips I haven't any right Madame, to do the things I do Just when I hold you tight, madame You vanish with the night, madame In dreams I kiss your hand, madame and pray my dreams come true. That was beautiful, Harold. Ah, uh, shucks, it wasn't anything. <sighs> you know, I think you deserve a kiss for singing that song. Well, I'm waiting. Here. <laughs> think I'll sing another chorus. <laughs> I think I'd better turn off the radio. Oop, there goes Guy Lombardo. <laughs> Gosh, love is wonderful, though, isn't it? Yes, it is. Uh, Harold? Yeah? I was just thinking of something. What's that? Well, I was thinking about your mother and Mr. Walker. Oh? Huh? Wouldn't it be wonderful if they fell in love and got married? Married? But Theodora, they hardly know each other. Well, it could be love at first sight. Not at first sight of Mr. Walker. <laughs> Sometimes when people are in a play together, they get very romantic. Oh? Oh, wouldn't it be cute if you went home and found out they were engaged? Engaged? Oh, no. And just think, someday Mr. Walker might be my father-in-law. Your father-in-law? Hey, that makes him my father. Zeef? See you later, Theodora. Where are you going, Harold? I'm going home to Mother before she marries Father. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> hurry home. Wonder if Theodora could be right. Mother did blush a little when he handed her the peanut brittle. Yeah, I suppose Mother did marry Mr. Walker. I'd have to call him Daddy. No, sir. I'd run away from home first. I'd get a job stacking soap chips at the laundromat. I wouldn't have him... Hello, Harold. Oh, hello, Doc. Howdy, boy. Well, Pete, <laughs> what are you two doing around here? Oh, we just dropped by your house, Harold. Yeah, but you wasn't there. No kidding. We, we saw a friend of yours in the parlor, Harold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mr. Walker. Oops. He's an awful sweet fella. He gave us both the cigar. Yeah. Oh, that was real nice of him. Oh, and, and Harold, Harold, you should have seen him and your mother. They look so cute, sitting there on the sofa. Yeah. <laughs> they were rehearsing a scene from the play. I guess it was kind of romantic. They was holding hands. Oop. You know... It kind of reminded me of that Shakespeare play where Romeo took Juliet into a restaurant. What? Yeah. You know, Romeo, what Juliet? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> that <a> <laughs> yeah, it certainly is. You know, Harry. You know, it, it looks to me like your mother and Mr. Walker kind of stuck on each other. What? Yes, I do declare. One of these days, you're liable to hear a radio news flash about that romance. Now, Pete. Scoop. My first exclusive. What mother of what young crooner will soon middle aisle it with what man about town? <laughs> Fellas, cut it out now. You're exaggerating this thing. You're not going to... They're not going to get married. Well, I think it'd be real nice, Harold. A grown boy like you needs a father. I do not. Yes, you do. He, he'd tuck you in bed at night and tell you the story of the three bears. Fellas. <laughs> he might even sing you to sleep. 
Climb upon my knee, shiny boy. Though you're only three, shiny boy. This is what killed Vaudeville. <laughs> Big help. The awful if Mother did fall for Mr. Walker. Mother! Oh, hello, son. Hello. Uh, where's Mr. Walker? Oh, he left, Harold. He did? Uh, he left early. That's a good sign. I'm just clearing away the cocoa cup. <laughs> Look at Mother. What am I worried about? She's too sensible to fall for a character like Mr. Walker. Sure. And I thought she might want to marry him. Ridiculous. <laughs> It'd be so nice to have a man around the house. <laughs> yeah. So nice. Mother. It's so nice to have a man around the house. Mother, don't sing that. One who'd hold my hand a little and who'd bring me peanut brittle. <laughs> boy, just call me Sonny Boy. <laughs> Return for the second act of our story, Honest Harold, in just a moment. Who was the faster fellow pitching the woo? The blade of the gay 90s or the man of today? Bing Crosby and his guest, Judy Garland, have a merry debate with gags and songs to illustrate their points on tonight's CBS Bing Crosby show. Be listening for this laughable, tuneful session. Judy Garland as Bing Crosby's guest on most of these same CBS stations tonight. And now... Back to Harold Perry as Honest Harold, the homemaker. Well, Honest Harold is spending a sleepless night. Every time he closes his eyes, he sees his mother married to the irritating Mr. Walker. And this is a nightmare to Harold. It's two o'clock in the morning now, and we find Harold flopping around on his bed like a tortured dolphin. Ooh, what a night. I think I'll turn over on my stomach. <laughs> Darn it, now my feet are cold. My booty slipped off again. <laughs> uh, just got to get to sleep and forget all about Mr. Walker. Just close my eyes and count sheep. One little sheep, two little sheep, three little oop. That one looked like Mr. Walker. <laughs> Gee, gods, how long is this going on? <sighs> yeah, I am getting a little drowsy. I think I'm going to make it this time. <sighs> Good night, Harold. Sleep tight. <laughs> Well, look at my little sonny boy, tucked away in bed. Zeef, what you for? Want daddy to tell you a bedtime story, sonny? Buggle, buggle. Once upon a time, there were three bears. <laughs> <laughs> go away, Walker, go away. Anyway, I know that story. Station case, J.P. Just a moment, I'll connect you. Uh, good morning, Gloria. Oh, good morning, Harold. How's your mother? What? Oh, she's fine. And how's Mr. Walker? <laughs> no, I'll see here, Gloria. When's the wedding? What? Oh, you're going to make an awfully cute flower girl. Oh, Gloria, just because they got a little crush on each other doesn't mean that they're going to get married. After all, mother's past the impulsive age. Well, people are never too old to fall in love, Harold. Uh -huh. I know a couple. Well, they're both 85, and they fell in love at first sight. They did? Yes. Fifteen minutes after they met, they became engaged. Engaged? You mean he gave her a ring? No, he gave her his Townsend button. Did... <laughs> Good. Oh, but they didn't stay engaged very long. Oh, they didn't? No, two days later, they eloped. Oop. You say they were 85? Yes. Gosh, I'd better watch Mother Gloria. She's only 63. No telling what a kid like that'll do. (laughs) 
good idea of mine coming home for lunch. I can kind of keep an eye on Mother and see what she's up to. A fine thing, playing detective with my own mother. Mother, I'm home. Oh, hello, Harold. You didn't tell me you were coming home for lunch. Well, I just thought I'd sneak, uh, I mean, come home and surprise you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's nice. Uh, how are things, Mother? Read any good books lately? What? I mean, what have you been doing all morning? Oh, little dab here, a little dab there, and a rub-a-dub-dub in the tub. <laughs> Didn't find out much there. <laughs> oh, I did get a phone call from Mr. Walker. You did? Yes, and we had an awfully nice talk. <laughs> uh, and what did you talk about? About, uh, 20 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Mother's pretty cagey, all right. <laughs> Oop, there she goes again. <laughs> I think that's what she's singing. <laughs> Mother? Yes? If there's anything you want to tell me, Mother, don't be afraid. I'll understand. <laughs> well, I do have something to confess, Harold. You do? Uh, here it comes. Yes. When I was sweeping under your bed this morning, I broke a wing off your model airplane. Oh. Oh, that's all right, Mother. Just an old P-36. <laughs> and I thought they were going to lope. Well, Mother, how about lunch? All right, son, I'll fix it right away. And then I have a busy afternoon ahead of me. Oh, is that so? Yes, I have to pack my suitcase. Huh? <laughs> I told Mr. Walker I'd be all ready when he comes by for me. If? And, uh, oh, Harold, huh? uh, is that old ladder still out in the garage? <laughs> what? We want to use it tonight. Zoof. Well, I'll get your lunch now. Never mind, Mother. I think I'll just take a hot bath instead. Pete and Doc, I want to thank you fellas for coming to this meeting. I certainly appreciate it. Oh, sure, it's all right, boy. I was right here in my office anyhow. Well, I was glad to do it, Harold. Thanks. Yes, sir, when I got your phone call at the dog clinic, I said to myself, my old friend needs me. So I dropped my flea powder and rushed right over. <laughs> yeah, certainly very nice of you, Yes, Doc. sir, when a man's drowning and going down for the third time, who's there with a the life preserver? Old Docky Ant. Yeah, all right, Doc. Now, the reason I called you fellas together is, well... It looks like my mother and Mr. Walker are going to elope tonight. Well, congratulations, Harry. And my felicitations to you, boy. Well, fellas, you don't understand. I want your help. Okay, boy. I'll hold the ladder. <laughs> Stop the clowning. This is serious. Yeah, well, I'm only kidding, Harry. Fellas, I wouldn't mind my mother getting married, but Charlie Walker. Imagine hearing that laugh around the house all the time. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah. We understand, Harry. And I've got to stop Mother from rushing into this. She'd make an awful mistake. I just thought you fellas could help me figure out some way to stop them from eloping. And now, let me see. Man, we... I, I got it. Huh? I know how we can stop the elope. You do? How, Doc? Yes, sir. Doc Yancey's come through again. What is it, Doc? Oh, Doc Yancey, you're so clever. <laughs> Will you stop taking bows and tell us your idea? Um, well, the thing to do in a case like this is to sabotage the getaway car. How's that, boy? Well, now when Walker parks in front of Harold's house tonight, we'll just cross a few of his wires on his car and he won't be able to get away at all. <laughs> Say, that'll fix his magneto. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a great idea, Doc. Oh, it wasn't much. All I did was save the day, that's all. You certainly did, Doc. We'll sneak over to my house as soon as it's dark, fellas. Honest Harold has just begun to fight. Mother shall not elope tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's my house, fellas. It's nice and dark, too. Nobody can see us. In fact, I can't even see you. Fellas, are you still with me? I'm right here, Harry. Where's Pete? Pete? Boo! <laughs> will you, Pete? Walker will hear us out here. Is his car here, Harry? Yeah, there it is. Parked in my driveway, just like he owned the place already. And there's the ladder against the house, like I told you, at Mother's mm -hmm. window. Well, we better get to work on the car before they come down. Yeah, okay, Doc. Shucks, fellas. I'm starting to feel kind of sentimental about this elopement. I think I'll just tie my shoes on the bumper and leave. <laughs> Pete? Go on, Doc. Up. 
pull up the hood, Doc, and be quiet. All right. Yes, sir, it's a good thing I thought of this idea. <laughs> Whenever you're in trouble, Harold, you just come yeah, to me. Yeah, pull up the hood. Oh. Gosh, can't even see the motor. Pretty old car. Maybe he hasn't got one. <laughs> Guess we'll just have to feel around here. Yeah, well, hurry up. They'll be coming down the ladder any minute. See if you can pull a wire loose. Okay. Yeah. I'm pulling on something. Mm -hmm. Feels like fan belt. Pete, you're pulling my tie. <laughs> Beg your pardon, boy. <laughs> Say, huh? I got hold of a wire. I'll loosen it up a little. Yep. Well, it came out all together. <laughs> yeah. You won't even run now. <laughs> yeah, we better make sure. Let me see what I can do. Yeah, oh, oh, here's something. Yeah. <coughs> oh, what do you know? I just got me a carburetor. <laughs> <laughs> it sure is. <laughs> well, what the heck, I might as well get in on this, too. <laughs> Feel around in here. <laughs> I got something. Look <laughs> <laughs> what I got, fellas. The fuel pump. <laughs> Cheap material. <laughs> hey, you sure hit the jackpot, boy. <laughs> Here, hold it, Doc. I'll see what else I can find. Haven't had so much fun since Halloween. <laughs> Why, Harold, is that you out there? Oh, hello, Mother. <laughs> How's you doing, Sonny? I'm stopping you from eloping with my mother, Mr. Walker. Eloping? Why, Harold, whatever gave you that idea? Huh? We're not eloping. We're just going to a rehearsal of our play. You're not eloping? But what about the suitcase, Mother? And the ladder? Oh, we're just using them for props. Props? That's theatrical language, Sonny. But... Well, we better get started, Penelope. Harold, uh -huh. better tell him about the car, boy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Walker, I'm afraid you won't be able to go in this car of yours tonight. That ain't my car, Sonny. It's your car. <laughs> Mine's out there in the street. I had to back yours out of the garage to get the ladder. <laughs> if you boys will excuse us, Mr. Walker and I'd better get started. You're very well, Penelope. Well, I'll see you later, Sonny. <laughs> Harold. Yeah? Here's your carburetor, boy. <laughs> you better take your fuel pump, too. Thanks. See you later, Harold. So long, boy. <laughs> you have just heard the Harold Perry show, Honest Harold. The supporting players tonight included Jane Morgan, Carly Bayer, Cliff Arquette, and Mari Alden, and featured Gloria Holiday as Gloria and Joseph Kearns as old Doc Yak Yak. Norman MacDonald directed, and the music was composed and conducted by Jack Meekin. Honest Harold, created by Harold Perry, was written by Gene Stone, Jack Robinson, and Dick Powell. As a hot jazz drummer with more than a touch of the ham about him, Fred McMurray will be your star on Suspense, radio's outstanding theater of thrills, tomorrow night. While playing as a member of a group called the Windy City Six, drummer McMurray will be the witness to a cold-blooded killing, following which the ham in him struggles with his fear of reprisal. Another fine star, Joseph Cotton, also visits CBS tomorrow evening. Mr. Cotton will star in A Man for the Ages, the Hallmark Playhouse drama staged in observance of Abraham Lincoln's birthday. CBS invites you to hear Fred McMurray on Suspense and Joseph Cotton on the Playhouse over most of these same stations tomorrow evening. Stay tuned now for The Bing Crosby Show, which follows immediately over most of these same CBS stations. And it's good, too. Bob Lamont speaking. <laughs> This is CBS, where you meet Mr. Keene, tracer of lost persons every Thursday night, the Columbia Broadcasting System.